to be your host and today we are not in the shop we are in our classroom mostly because it's really really hot outside so i wanted to take a break bring y'all into the classroom and i'm going to teach y'all a little bit of theory so a lot of times i come at y'all with a singular problem on a vehicle but this is something that you can use on any vehicle with any electrical problem that you have okay so let's talk before we talk about circuits which is what this video is about let's talk a little bit about repair logic Okay. Repair logic is something that I call a wise guy approach to repairing a problem in a car and it is problem based. In other words, we have an issue and we know how the system works and we know how it's not working. So we're working on a symptomatic approach to what's wrong with the car. So let's talk about electrical problems. Okay. Uh, an electrical circuit needs four things to work and only four things to work. Okay. Remember that four things. Okay. So the first thing we're going to need for a circuit to work is power. Okay. And normally this comes from either the battery or the alternator, and it can be run through a fuse or something like that. And then we have to have ground. Okay. So ground is the second thing that we're going to need. Ground is going to come from either the body or the negative side of the battery. Okay. Then we have to have a conductor. We have to have a way to get the power and the ground to the product that we're trying to use on the car. Okay. And then we have to have the load. Okay. The load is what acts as the resistance in the circuit and what's terminating all the voltage. Okay. Which we'll talk a little bit about that later, but we have those four things and that makes a working circuit. Now we can have more than one load. We can have different conductors. We can have things to actually stop the conductance of electricity like switches and fuses and limiting devices and things like that but they all count as conductors we have power ground conductor load that's it so if you have an electrical issue it's at least one of those things has gone bad with your circuit okay it can be more than one but it's at least one so if we start our repair logic our symptomatic approach to fixing this car we're going to start checking for those four things. That's going to be the first uh, steps we take. So how we do that is through wiring diagrams, schematics, uh, all kinds of stuff, service information. But the first thing we want to look at is the type of circuit that we're dealing with. So there's three main circuits that cars work on, and that's going to be series, parallel, and series controlled parallel. Okay. So let's talk about a series circuit. Okay. I'm going to draw it on the board here. We have our 12 volts and we have our ground and I'll draw the positive in red. So we have our power and ground right here coming out of our battery. That's going to be our 12 volts. Okay. And most vehicle, when we're talking about vehicle electronics, we're getting into 12 volts. Okay. That's going to be our baseline, our voltage. So now we're going to see what if we got just a bulb, okay? So this is going to be our bulb here. That's going to be our load, okay? And then a simple series circuit with one load, we're going to take our ground, we're going to put it on one side of this bulb, and we're going to take our power, and put it on the other side of this bowl, okay? And once we have our power, ground, our conductors, and our load, we should have let there be light, okay? So that is one of the simple circuits that we have. Uh, it may work for singular horns, uh, our cigarette lighter, or something may just be a simple one load series circuit, okay? So you can have more than one load in a series circuit and they just go back to back. So it would be, um, let me grab a black mark here. It would be like this. Now, the only issue like that is we're going to get into a Christmas light situation where if one of these bulbs go out, then the other one's going to go out as well because it's not getting 
that that current has to flow through this bulb and through this conductor and through this bulb. So if there's any cut in this load right here, we're going to lose the whole circuit or we're going to lose our load, okay? But the load in the series circuit actually acts as a conductor as well. It's very important to remember. Let me show you how this works on the uh, breadboard that I have, and then you'll understand it a little bit better. It's a little bit hard to understand here on the board. Okay, this is my breadboard here, and this is what I teach electrical on. It's a little bit easier than just doing it on the car. So I have my voltage set for a little over 12 volts. That's going to be uh, battery voltage, and I have my power is going to be over here on this side, and my ground is going to be here. Okay, and I have this bulb here. This is just a little peanut bulb that uh, is in a lot of cars. So I'm gonna put it back in here. It's like a 194 or 162. And so I'm gonna add my ground. It doesn't matter which way we do this. And then I'm gonna add my power. And so I'm gonna put this right here and we have everything we need to make that circuit work. So this is for a just a simple uh, single circuit here. Now, if we wanted to, we could put two bulbs in series. Let me get some more wire here. Just like we drew it up on the board. But this is going to change a lot. So now my voltage is split and my bulbs are definitely a lot dimmer than when I had just a single bulb lit. So that's because I'm dividing my voltage separately between these two. And if one of these bulbs goes out, so I'll pull this bulb out here, both are going to go out. Put this back in because the bulb are actually acting as a conductor. And remember, if we take one of those four things away from the circuit, then the circuit's not going to work. So that's a series circuit. That's a two bulb series circuit. Uh, we don't really see multiple loads in a series circuit on most cars. Okay, so parallel circuits, a lot different than series circuits. And most of the circuits that we have on our vehicles are either single load series circuits or parallel circuits. Think about headlights, tail lights, Things like that, uh, your dash lights that may come on with the doors are open, excuse me, the dome lights and everything are going to be what we call a parallel circuit. In other words, with one of those bulbs go out, it's not the end of the world. It doesn't kill the whole circuit. It just kills that one leg of the circuit. So let me draw one of these, okay? And we're going to start with our 12-volt battery, right? And we have... A bulb here, a bulb here, and a bulb here, okay? Say this is three uh, interior light bulbs that come on when the headlights are on. Okay, so our negative is going to be here, and it's going to go here, another leg, and another leg, okay? And our power or our voltage, it's gonna go here, here, here. Okay, so it's important to remember with circuits that electricity is going to travel the path of least resistance, okay? So if there's any resistance, the electricity is gonna to try to go another way, okay? Just like if you're at the grocery store and you see a bunch of long lines and you see a little short line, you're gonna go in that short line before you go to all those other long lines, right? So. Here is our circuit. Now, I'm not drawing any circuit protection or circuit control on this. I'm just trying to keep it simple. But with this on, all these bulbs should be on, okay? With this circuit drawn this way. So all of our bulbs are on. Also, they're on the same brightness. The brightness is gonna be the same. And if we lose one of these bulbs or if one of the legs get cut or broken here in this circuit, the other two bulbs will be okay. They're still going to come on. Of course, the bulb will be out, whatever leg it's on, but everything else will be okay. Also, the more legs we add 
the resistance of the entire circuit is gonna go down, which means our amperage is gonna to have to go up. So if we're using a fuse or a circuit breaker or something to protect this circuit, that number is gonna be going up on that fuse or that circuit breaker versus going down, okay? So with this, this is gonna be what we normally see on most cars. And I'm gonna show you how that circuit works on our breadboard. Okay, back to the breadboard for parallel circuits. So we're gonna take these two bulbs and we're gonna wire them up in parallel. And so we need power and ground. We need our wires for conductors. So I'm gonna put this here. Then just like on the board, I'm going to put this here and that there on that second one. And then we're gonna do the same on the ground side. Connect them here. And we have two bright bulbs, okay? Now that was a lot brighter than the last time when I wired these up in a series circuit. And the cool thing about this, if one of these bulbs goes out, it still stays lit and it stays the same brightness because the voltage is treated differently as it goes through each leg of the circuit. So uh, these are found on all, all parts of the vehicles. Okay, so very common. Uh, and what I do when I diagnose these, if I've got other legs of the circuit that are working, and I know are on the same uh, circuit, then I go from the load and I diagnose the way back. Okay, so pretty easy on these. Normally it's load issues if you have a partial circuit bad, but we can also have a wire bad that's going to cause this or a connection issue as well. So always keep your options open when you're doing your diagnostics on these type of circuits. Okay, for our series control parallel circuit, this is going to be something that has like a dimmer. It's going to control one side of the circuit, normally the power side of the circuit, and give power to each leg. So here is our battery once again. Okay, again, 12 volts for ground. This is our uh, bulbs here. Not a very good artist, guys. Y'all have to kind of deal with it. Now we'll have our variable resistor here that's going to control the power going to all of this by adding or subtracting resistance. If you think about a uh, dash dimmer, that is going to probably be your easiest thought of how this type of circuit's going to work. So like when we get in the car, we can dim or we can brighten the lights on the dash that, that is gonna help us uh, at night and not blind us. So here's our power and our battery. Our power is gonna go through the variable resistor and go here, here, and here. And our ground, is going to terminate like normal, okay? Now that's how that circuit works. It's a pretty rare circuit, but it's basically we use resistance to control a parallel circuit, okay? So these, this is gonna work a little bit differently. And uh, again, you'll normally only see this on like dimmer circuits, uh, interior light circuits, some, something like that. Um, but that's about it, so. Okay, everybody, so that was my first lesson that I'm going to give you guys on circuits. So we went over series circuit, parallel circuit, and series control parallel circuits. I drew them on the board for you, and I built the series and parallel circuit on my breadboard. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments, and I'll get to them as soon as possible. I'm very quick about getting back to my viewers. So always like the video if you uh, learned anything from this video, and subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you subscribe now, you're going to get the next uh, segment of this video since this is just a part one. The part two is coming probably early next week. And as always, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. I'm on VK if you're in Europe. I'm on uh, Twitter. I mean, pretty much anywhere.